Welcome to the Pope on Film. I'm Bunny Williams. And I am the Pope in question, uh, Reverend Steve Galindo, founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is at edwood.org as long as we've paid the bill. <laughs> Why don't you tell and us a little bit more about the a little bit more about that, the Church of Ed Wood? Yes. Um I created it in 1996 as a joke, as part of a computer class. I, I had to do a, a website for a for a class, and I I had no idea what to do. And I talked to the teacher, and the teacher said that it, it just has to be a website. It can be anything at all. It doesn't matter. Just make a website out of what you know. And I said, the only two things that I really know about are religion and Ed Wood. So I, I put those two together in what I thought was a funny sort of way. At the time, in on campus, I kept getting a lot of emails with uh, shocking similarities to JFK and Abraham Lincoln, which I thought was bullshit. So I made a... Edward equals God, the website. Shocking similarities between Edward and God, and I expounded <laughs> on all of the different, all of Edward's friends and all of his um, cast members and buddies and who they would be in a religion, and I was just having fun with it, but I eventually started hearing from people all over the world, New York and San Francisco, people saying that they drew strength from the website, that they really believed in it. One person said that it stopped them from committing suicide, and that's when I said, well, maybe there's something to this. So I spent a really long time uh, learning about religion and different religions, and I crafted my own, and I... I, I I used to get a lot of interviews pre-9-11 about the church, and they were all negative. They were almost all making fun of me and, and laughing about it like I was a joke. And then somehow after 9-11, I got a lot of press, but it was all serious. Like somehow after 9-11 happened, nobody was laughing at me anymore. I'm not exactly sure why. I'm not that smart of a person to come up with some sort of social commentary on that. But people stopped laughing about the Church of Ed Wood from, like, 9-11 on, and it's been yeah. pretty awesome. It's been a long time since I've been doing this. And there's there's, yeah. not, yeah. there's not too many updates to the website, but to be fair, it's always just been me and a bunch of invisible followers throughout the globe. But every once in a while, I'll, I'll meet someone who knows who I am, and I feel like a like a slight amount of fame and prestige for about five seconds. <laughs> but it's pretty awesome. Well, you, you've done a good few interviews, and, and pretty big ones, too. You're in the Huffington Post, I remember. Oh, yeah, I did an article for them. That, that was weird. It was a nice little <laughs> something that fell on my lap where I was able to write an article in the Huffington Post. And, yeah. and I don't think it'll ever happen again, but I can say that I, I was I'm published – I guess that's something positive to say. The yeah. Rue Morgue Horror Magazine gave me a two-page spread, which was really, really nice. And then I did a, an interview with this Canadian horror radio show. I was on uh, Mark and Brian on the radio. ABC News, I was on there for like a half hour. And I did an article. There was some guy who was the head of like the AP Newswire and he was watching Ed Wood and he searched Ed Wood on Google and he came up with me so he sent a reporter to interview me and they called me at home and when the interview was done the the woman said hey can we put like a, some sort of contact information to go with this article and I said yes I didn't realize that she meant that the article about the Church of Ed Wood would have my home phone number on it. Oh, okay. So two days after the interview, I got a call at 5 a.m. from, like, some sort of radio station in Fargo uh -huh. who had to talk to me. And it was just – I, I spent a lot of time on the radio after that for a really long time. 
ABC News, they called me up, and I was really tired, and somebody else answered the phone that I was living with, and I remember saying that, oh, uh, that that was just uh, a woman in my harem. And so I got some angry calls with people that are like, I don't, I can't believe the Church of Edward, that the leader of this religion would have a harem of women. So I had to kind of apologize for that. It's like, no, okay, that's not. The weird thing was was that the majority of the time when I created the Church of Edward, I I was in Phoenix, Arizona, and for some reason, the majority of people in my clique, my group of friends, they a lot of them were members of the Church of Body Modification. Okay. So whatever so whatever I was doing with my own religion, I was constantly surrounded by these people who felt superior and thought that what I was doing was stupid. But I don't know if the Church of Body Modification is still around. I guess I should Google them. I, but... I, haven't, I haven't heard from them in a really long time. I, I was going to go on a quest looking for them because I really wanted to, film, to you know, get some film footage of people swinging from their nipples. Yeah, they were always you know, doing that sort of thing. Oh, modern primitive. Yeah, oh god, man! I was like, I was like, that, that would be. I don't know. I, I can use that somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a really weird ride. Every once in a while, because I work at a bookstore, a popular huh? bookstore chain, and I'll just be putting books away and and you know dusting. And every once in a while, like maybe once or twice a year, there'll be a man in drag or two or three that'll come into the bookstore and give me a look and I'll give them a look and I'm pretty sure that it's like a look of knowledge of who I am and yeah. that's yeah. nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I had found you in 2007 pretty much when I first started working this job uh, and have a, you know, sometimes I get a little time to surf the web. Um but just coming in, I was a religion and philosophy student when I was in school. So Ed Wood, just from the beginning, going back from it came from Hollywood, kind of resonated with me a bit. So uh, from there, I read the blog. From like First, I read the church page with all the lessons yeah. Wood and all that. And then I found your blog, and I read through all of that to whenever that was current in 2007. <clears throat> My like, blog is just an epic monster at this point. <laughs> it's been around for You're a good writer. Well, also, it's been around since uh, 2004. So now yeah. anyone who says, oh, yeah, I've read through your whole blog is just, wow, okay. I, I, mm-hmm. I, I, I am vaguely sorry because that's a lot. <laughs> By the way, I, if you're seriously... listening, it's on uh, reverendsteve.blogspot.com. That's called an ad. I was just hawking my website there on my yeah. podcast. All right. Uh, if, you know, if we ever get a chance to, like, actually get together, man, I, I really always wanted to do a short film out of uh, the Dirt Pubs, the Dirt Pub stories. Oh, God. Yeah, that was a good – yeah, I, I, I moved to – I was in Phoenix, and – all of my family moved to Sacramento, California, and I stayed in Phoenix. And so eventually I just moved to Sacramento with my tail between my legs to, to go in with my family. But my older brother, four years older than me, he was just so happy to have someone else there that he knew, and he just put his arm around me. It's like, okay, we're going to go to this bar, we're going to go to this bar, we're going to go to this bar. These people know me. Okay, this place is... a. a really kind of a dirt bar, but you're going to love it here. Let's go. And they have karaoke every night, and we're going to get wasted. And it was, I remember when I first went into that bar, it was literally just a mirror of the same bar he used to go to in Phoenix. Except now it's just the same thing, but the bar's on the other side. This mirror is over here, but it was it, it was like a like an evil copy of the bar he used to go to in Phoenix. And I uh-huh. found that odd, and it, it, yeah, there was like a five-year, three-year, four-year haze of my life of that bar. Yeah. Just 
you know, you go there and you it's the same people and the same songs and a really good fun time, but eventually it's just you're living the same day every night. You're mm-hmm. going to the same yeah. place and just it, it, it was just a haze. And eventually I realized and I came to the conclusion that this bar was somehow some sort of Stephen King monster that was alive and sucking the soul out of everyone. Mm-hmm. That somehow the bar itself was alive and just making everybody happy to be stuck inside of it. And oh man, I miss that place. I'm friends with them on Facebook now. Yeah. So yay! Yeah. Every place in existence <laughs> has to have a Facebook page now. This is true. This is true. Facebook keeps asking me about my high school. I don't want to. I don't want anybody from my high school seeing me now. <laughs> I didn't yeah. like men. <laughs> yeah. I don't want them back in my life. <laughs> I I graduated in a huge class, like a massive class of like a couple of hundred people. And I swear I'm friends with about two-thirds of them on Facebook. And I'm happy to be friends with them because I want them to know how happy and weird I am. It's like, hey, popular guy from the football team that I vaguely know, I want you to know about the religion I created, and I want you to know about changing me changing baby diapers. I want this to be as awkward for you as I can. Let me show you my political beliefs. Let me shove this down your throat. Yeah, it's pretty weird. I'm also friends with a lot of my like old classmates from the my Catholic school days and I have no idea how they take any of this. Yeah. Yeah. But mm-hmm. yeah, more power, more power to them. You can believe what you believe, just let me be here in my little corner of the world. Yeah. Uh. For me, it's kind of like the two things that Ed Wood has taught me, and I, I don't want to really make this a church show. I don't think you really do either, you know, but uh, it is what we believe, so he'll deal with it. Uh, is one, you know, like the saying, the thing I say fairly often is, oh, Jesus may have died for you, but Ed Wood failed for me. That's, and I that's, that's really, really nice. Fucking, that's like a good shirt or a bumper sticker right there. That is really, yeah. really nice. The thing that I, mean, I like that's the big problem is that so many people are afraid to do anything because they're afraid to fail. Yeah. That's you the know? that's the thing that I try and and take away from Edward's life is that Edward wanted to be a filmmaker, but he didn't have money and he didn't have the people to help him and he didn't have the special effects he didn't have the set he didn't have good actors he he didn't have anything that you need to be a filmmaker but he didn't let the reality of his situation stop him from him becoming who he actually wanted to be mhm also there's the fact that he, you know in the 50s and 60s he was okay with having facial hair and smoking a cigarette and drinking alcohol in a dress in public. Mm-hmm. And there's something that's mm-hmm. so bold. Admirable. Yeah, there's something so bold about that that I'm just I'm really I'm I I want to I want to be that type of person that cares so little about what other people think, you know? Mhm. Because I, I really I really I really care way too much about how other people think of me. So I really try and hope that, you know, thinking about Ed Wood walking down Rodeo or Sunset Boulevard in drag and being okay with that, that I I hope that I can be like him. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And there's also a lot about following your dreams and don't let anything get in the way of that. You know, I mean, I I have I really kind of vibrate with the whole idea of putting up cardboard, you know, cardboard tombstones and stuff to make a graveyard because that's simply just all you got. Yeah. You know, and that project just has to get finished. It has to be made. 
doesn't make difference if they're cardboard. Yeah. You know, you have to finish that. You know, so again, the whole big thing about chasing your dream and doing whatever you can to make that come become a reality. Yeah, there's something very admirable about that. Mm-hmm. That's why I've been obsessed for the past two or three years with the musician Adam Warrock. I'm constantly mentioning him on my blog and on my Facebook page. He's at AdamWarrock.com. And he was a successful lawyer for a number of years, but he always dreamed of being a rapper. So he actually mm-hmm. quit being a successful lawyer so that he could go and rap. And he yeah. gives out the majority of his music for free on his website. And it's songs about uh, comic books and songs about movies that he likes and songs about uh, Pacific Rim and Doctor Who and Firefly and there's something I I sense a lot of Ed Wood in him, you know, yeah. because he was making a ton of money, but he decided to be poor but happy with who he was, and that's it, that's just the essence of Ed Wood right there. Plus, mm-hmm. his music is awesome. I'm obsessed with him. He's my man crush. I, yeah, I've not listened to him. I'm I'm not a big music person in general, you know. So I'm a huge music yet. person. I have to have music on just constantly all of the time. I have to have music playing. And also, I'm bipolar, so my moods shift radically. Mm-hmm. So my music is very bipolar. And it can yeah. it can sometimes like drive people insane. I'll be playing music <laughs> and it'll be like the misfits and then um it'll be Peggy Lee. Yeah. And then it'll be Anthrax and then Perry Como. It's just right down the board. Public Enemy and then Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. And it's just (laughs) every single type of song, minus country, is on my phone. They'll be playing like uh, some popular song. um, I don't know. They'll be playing some... (sighs) What's popular with the kids nowadays? I have no idea. Is they'll be playing some Nicki Minaj song, say, and then it'll go straight into some French pop song mm-hmm. or something in Japanese. And it, it, it drives people crazy, absolutely crazy, my music, because it's every corner of the globe. <laughs> I have to have music on all the time. I remember watching the Monkees TV show when they had that revival, when they were playing it on Nickelodeon, Nick at Night, and I think they were playing the Monkees TV TV show. Yeah, they were playing it on Nick at Night, I think. They were playing it on VH1 for a while, MTV maybe. They had like a revival. Yeah. That I, yeah. I remember. I used to catch them in New York on Channel 5, which later became the Fox station, but it wasn't then. So, yeah, I used to catch them, and I used to watch them pretty much when I came home from school. Yeah, I remember seeing them when I came home from school, too, on UHF stations. I don't think they have UHF stations anymore. But I remember, <laughs> but I remember them being a staple. Like the Monkey Show, uh, Gilligan's yeah, yeah, Island, My Three Sons, that sort of a thing. Yeah. Yeah, like in the like, like eight, like late eighties, early nineties. Suddenly they were all over the place again. And I remember yeah. liking the Monkeys, but I don't remember ever seeing the movie Head. Until I was in, like, junior high or high school or something like that, because that's when I really became obsessed with bad movies, and I just, I had to watch everything, and I had to see all of these movies, and I just heard, hey, did you hear the monkeys made a movie? And I thought of that probably back then, because I didn't respect the movie. I think when I heard, hey, did the monkeys make a movie, I was just rubbing my hands all excited, like you would hear... Like if you're a bad movie lover and you hear, hey, did you hear the Spice Girls made a movie? 
Yeah. Or like if New exactly. Kids on the Block made a movie. That was my thinking back then when I first saw Head. I was thinking, ooh, the monkeys made a movie? This is going to be horribly wonderful. I can't wait to sit down and watch this. And I vaguely uh-huh. remember seeing the movie Head in high school and thinking it was weird, but I haven't seen it since then. And I sat yeah. down and I watched that movie, and God damn was I impressed. <laughs> it's a it's an excellent movie. It is such a surprise, and they manage to to keep all the balls in the air. You know, it's not too dissimilar from the TV show. You know, but it's kind of like yeah. what the TV show would be if they were left to do what they wanted to do. Yeah, it, you know, it, a lot of times it's humor. Yeah, a lot of times it seemed like they were purposely going out of their way to kind of deconstruct the the monkeys that you knew almost from TV definitely. and stuff like that. Yeah, was, almost definitely. It was quite impressive. It reminded me, it, it, watching it, I I thought if I had to kind of use a movie to personify the 1960s and the late 1960s and counterculture and all of that, that this would be one of like a handful of movies that I would pick to represent a very 1968-1969 time frame or style or something like that. This and another movie, Casino Royale. Not the one like where the, Woody Allen has a bit part, David Miller? Yeah, the one where... The, the one... And I love saying this out loud because it sounds like I'm making it up, but no. The one where Woody Allen has a hiccup bomb inside of him, where if he (laughs) hiccups a hundred times, then everything will explode? Yes, that movie. (laughs) I love that movie. I love that movie so much. I love that movie. I I haven't seen the whole thing in years, but... Um, I'd say like about once or twice a month I'll watch the ending of the movie. Really? Because I am obsessed with the ending to the movie Casino Royale because it's like it starts off a little bit weird and then it gets weirder and it gets weirder but then like the last five minutes of the movie the last ten minutes of the movie there are just no more rules let's shove everything that we can into this movie if it doesn't make sense sense, it doesn't matter, let's just, uh, (laughs) Indians and their uh, Native American, James Bond, go-go dancers, sure, why not? Let's have them go-go dance. And I'm obsessed with that movie, and I just think, if I had to, once again, if I had to just say, what is the 1960s, I'd just go, okay, here's the monkey's head, here's Casino Royale, maybe Yellow Submarine, and here you go. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to have to check out Casino Real again. You don't have to. Just really... watch the last ten minutes. Just watch the last ten minutes. Keystone cops show up. There's monkeys with yeah. guns. It's just, it's it's the greatest ending ever. I have forced my kids <laughs> to watch that so many times. It has become such an important part of my life that if I'm ever in a situation like some sort of school function for my kids or I'm at Walmart and it just, if ever I'm in a situation where things start getting crazy, then I'll start humming the music at the end of Casino Royale. Because at the end of Casino (laughs) Royale, it's just, okay, this is silly now. We're just going to play some circus music. So if things are getting weird at like a family reunion or if I'm at like, like in-laws and things are getting crazy, then I'll just start singing just start go-go dancing like a like a Native American James Bond. Yeah. <laughs> it's wonderful. I, I can't. I could talk for a whole podcast just on the ending of Casino Royale. The rest of it doesn't matter. Just the ending. I love it so much. Well, <laughs> if I can find it on YouTube, the movie is good because schedule it. The rest of the movie is good because Peter Sellers actually tries to play like a like a suave, sexy sort of guy for a while there in that movie. Yeah. But I love that movie. But I was really thinking about uh, the monkeys and head. I my question that I thought was, would this be considered their Sergeant Pepper? 
I would say yes. Although, you know, I, I've, I've never met a Beatles movie that I liked. You know, I, eh, I just don't get along with that movie-wise. A Hard Day's Night was close. Uh, help, I always wanted that sunken bed, but everything else is kind of eh about that movie. Yeah. Yellow Submarine, I can appreciate for being beautiful, but not for being something I have to watch. Mm -hmm. It can be a bit dry. Um, Let It Be is just the greatest train wreck in the world. (laughs) I don't think it'll ever be fully released in the way that it should be. I don't think it'll ever be re-released or DVD or Criterion, at least not while there are some that are still alive. Yeah. Um, but that, that's an amazing Special Mystery right Tour is almost acceptable. I was wondering, is mystery. Head is Head the Monkeys, Sergeant Pepper, or is it their Magical Mystery Tour? I was quite impressed with the music in this movie, in Head. Yeah. It was quite amazing. I really liked how they... I really liked how they kind of came out with, with the message of, look, we know who we are. <laughs> you know? Yeah. We know we're the monkeys. And we know what you think about that. You know? So there was there was a lot of self deprecation almost. Not even not even really self deprecation, but there were a few a few points where they they took good shots at themselves. Yeah. You know, to say, yeah, we're we're not even a real band, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and then went on from there. So that was that was uh, almost beating the audience to the punch. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's quite amazing. I feel bad for the monkeys. While I was watching the movie, I felt bad for them because it's, it really is just an amazing art film. Uh-huh. But it was such an art film... That I that the monkeys fans were weirded out by it, and then all the Andy Warhol loving art film people would never go to a monkeys movie. So I feel right. like this movie kind of screwed them a little bit. But it is a beautiful movie. It's quite amazing. And I got to say, yeah. when I saw Frank Zappa appear, I I squealed like a little <laughs> like a little child. Like on Christmas they, morning, I just I they geeked had a out. Lot of interesting cameos. Yeah, I really liked uh, Annette Funicello. I liked uh, Sonny Liston was okay. Apparently, uh, Terry Garr and Dennis Hopper were in it, but I didn't see them at all. Terry Garr was in the kind of Civil War cowboy scene. Okay, yeah. Oh, well, that's her. All right. Well, I know who that yeah. is. Okay. Yeah. I don't know who Dennis um, Hopper apparently was. <laughs> he had a non-speaking part, but I, I yeah. no clue. Yeah. Victor Mature. <laughs> a giant yeah. Victor Mature. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Big Victor. Yeah. Yeah, the Big Victor. When I, the one thing that I, a couple of things that I took away from this. Number one, the first real musical number after the, the 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 mermaids come and save yeah. him and that that deconstruction of the monkeys theme song that first real rocking musical number michael nesmith and he's singing and all the girls are screaming for him i couldn't help but think that he was actually andy kaufman in disguise mm. pulling some <laughs> sort of a prank on everyone yet again yeah. That's what form. I took from that. <laughs> I really like the whole film part in the studio sequence, where they're, they're doing that, that, that cowboy sequence, and then there was a lot of breaking of the fourth wall in this movie. Yeah. And I really liked I that. I really, in the, that cowboy sequence, man, I really looked, liked when they ripped through the, uh, when uh, Mike Nesmith ripped through the map painting. Yes. Yes, I you know, watched like to that point. He had me. <laughs> you yeah. know, the scene had me. I, I I didn't connect it as being a map painting, and he ripped through it, and I was like, "Oh, that's cool." 
Yeah, my my uh, three year old watched like about two thirds of the movie until he fell asleep. But he loved the mermaids and he loved the blowing up of the Coke machine. And when he yeah. went through the mad painting, he just he laughed like it was the funniest joke he's ever seen in his life. <laughs> I had a problem watching. I had a problem watching this movie, but I, it was my own internal problem because apparently, subconsciously, I expect movies to have a very linear sense of time and a beginning and a middle and an end and a plot mm-hmm. and this is the hero and then there's a climax and then there's end credits. So I found myself just kind of, like, I knew that, okay, this movie isn't necessarily going to have a plot, so let's just sit down and enjoy the ride. But I found myself just thinking things like, okay, so we're in a vacuum now. Okay, so we're in a vacuum. Oh, wait, this is a dream of the cop? Okay, so is this real? What is this happening? And I just kept having to tell Uh myself, like, look, okay, shut up. Sit down and enjoy the ride that the monkeys are going to take you in. And a, and a lot of a lot of little commentaries along the way, which was so good. Like you had you had your typical Indian guru, which was so popular <laughs> yeah. at the time. You know, giving that very wise speech, and Peter's just kind of, kind of soaking that up. You know, and it sounds great. <clears throat> and then later they're in the box, and Peter yep. starts saying the same thing. And then Davy Jones is, are you okay? <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> and I really but, but, but was, I was horse shit or whatever the hell he said. I know he didn't say horse shit, but yeah, kind of what it came down to. And I was blown away by that by that song that Davy Jones sings about about his dad. Yeah. I was really blown away by that. It reminded me of of uh, Maxwell Silverhammer, a really happy mm-hmm. go lucky and theatrical song. Secretly, it's about something that's kind of fucked up. But here's right. something that's really just loud and and beautiful. And if you pay attention to the lyrics, it's kind of a dark song. But let's forget about that and enjoy how loud and vibrant this is. I was really blown away by that song. Uh huh. Uh huh, and and you always gotta love a little dance number in a movie. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and but then that, that comes back around to to like that self-deprecating with Frank Zappa. You know, yeah. We were like, yeah, I was, I was kind of working on my dancing. Yeah, you should probably be working on your music. <laughs> you know, yeah. This is so great, especially coming out of Frank, man. <laughs> God, he was. Frank Zappa was a definitely ahead of his time. Yeah. I don't know if there was ever a time for him, but he was definitely ahead of his time. Mm-hmm. Like Andy Kaufman was definitely made for... I think that if he, if Andy Kaufman had existed in the Internet age, that he would be much more successful. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. and I think Andy Kaufman was just he was hated for having been a popular within the time frame that he had. I think he is another person that just if you could just pick him up and put him somewhere else, he would be much more successful. I'm a huge fan, a huge fan yeah. of uh of Andy Kaufman's and a huge fan of Frank Zappa. And seeing Frank Zappa in this movie is just wonderful. I know there's a lot of I, I love I love really Andy Kaufman's wrestling days. And I loved the line that was in the movie, the one line that I heard, and I just I had to pause the movie because I had to write it down because I just thought it was so beautiful and brilliant. Um, nobody ever lends money to a man with a sense of humor. <laughs> That was a line in the movie, and it was such an important line that while he was saying it, the words appeared on the screen. Just to kind of cement it home, I heard that, and I was like, ooh, that's a bumper sticker. That's a T-shirt. Uh-huh. That is beautiful. That is a beautiful uh-huh. little scene. Uh-huh. 
Oh, man, I loved this movie. I was quite, I was pleasantly surprised by this movie. It really, really surprised me. We had only seen it like a couple of months back for the first time. I've been hearing about it on other podcasts I've listened to brought up uh, here and there, and it always sounded interesting. And then I found it on YouTube, and me and my girlfriend Jeannie watched it, and I was like, this is really not exactly what I expected. Yeah. You know, the same the same kind of feeling, you know. I yeah. wasn't expecting it, it to be nearly as coherent in its nonlinearness as it was. Yeah. You know, it wasn't it wasn't a mess, which is kind of what you would expect. Yeah. You know, put all the separate plot lines it's and all that. It's just amazing. The they, monkeys they really deserve a lot. Spread through the whole thing. Yeah, the monkeys really deserve a lot more credit than they get, especially for a movie as beautiful as this movie is. This is an amazing mm-hmm. movie. I mean, they have good music. I've always been a huge fan of their music, but, I, you know, the popular things that you always hear. I've never, ever delved deep into the monkeys. But watching this movie, I really think that I might, because this movie was just, I was blown away by it. This is, this is something that I am going to continue watching. It's a movie yeah. so great that I could see it being one of those movies that I could just put on whenever I feel like it, because it's just... yeah. And just just have it on something that you want to tell your friends about, and say, "Hey, man, you got to check out this amazing movie because it really is wonderful." Uh-huh. Yeah, for for certainly their best work out of everything they've done. You yeah. Know? Uh, yeah. Because even even musically, they were a created band, and of course, their songs were number one hits, but they were like that by design. Yeah. You know. Like they didn't write their songs; they were given them. They were given their songs. In a lot of cases, they didn't even play their instruments. Yeah. You know, so. But they were still good songs. You know, they were good yeah. songs. Like any kind of pop song, is a good song for whatever reason. You know. So, yeah, but this so, definitely. But this definitely feels like okay. Here's a movie they created. They created yeah. all of this. And here is yeah. music, and they created this music, and this is definitely it feels like a like a labor of love watching this whole movie. It might not make yeah. sense sometimes, but it's not supposed to make sense. It's supposed to be a sort of journey that you go through. It's just i i i two thumbs up this movie yeah. really wonderful absolutely definitely loved it. definitely a big thumbs up for me, yeah. Uh, Spice Girls can suck it. (laughs) Their movie sucked. They should have watched The Monkey's Head over and over again, and, okay, here you go. I can't think of too many other... Oh, God, I haven't seen that in a while, but yes. That's a hard one to get through. Yeah. That's That's Frank Zappa. You know, uh, they they kind of remind me of each other a bit. Yeah. Like Frank said that, but 200 Motels is really kind of a sludge. Yeah. Yeah. I can't think of any was, other. Was, everything was just very well placed, you know? Yeah. I'm trying to think of any other kind of band musical sort of movies that have come out. I think if if you're thinking of the Bee Gees... I think that horrible Sergeant Pepper's movie might count. That's a that's a it's, fun. It's movie. not their music, but it's definitely like a, them their their movie, and that's just wonderfully horrible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's like a Sunday morning movie. Yeah, yeah, definitely like a like a like a. Like a Sunday morning, maybe you're in pajamas and you don't have to think too hard sort of a movie. Yeah. Yeah. You click it on and you you talk to whoever your person is next to you and just every now and then look over and be like, yeah, it's still pretty fucked up. (laughs) (laughs) 
How did yeah. Aerosmith? <laughs> yeah, Aerosmith and George Burns and all that. Mm-hmm. Alice That's an Cooper. amazing movie. My parents Cooper. had the record of that. My parents had yeah. the record, and it was like a two-disc or three-disc, like, big, huge thing that you unfolded, and it had pictures of all of them. And I just remember looking at it and going, oh, wow, this is amazing. I'm going to have to see this movie one day. And then I saw the movie and just, nope, nope, <laughs> no, no. I, I'm, I may be young, and I may not know too much of the Beatles, but I know the Beatles enough to know that, no, no, this is not what you do. <laughs> With that, not at all. But hey, definitely two thumbs up. Oh yeah, definitely. That's the thing that I love about bad movies. There are some bad movies out there where it's like you're watching a bad movie, but you're having fun hating this movie. And a lot of times I would rather have fun hating a movie that's horrible than going to see something that is good. Yeah. Sometimes I'd rather just sit down and make fun of a movie that I don't like than having to go and see Liam Neeson beating up someone for $10. Yeah. I cannot help making fun of a movie. You know, and even if that movie is a work of art, you know, I I will sit here and, and... make fun of The Godfather all the way through it. Yeah. You know, love the movie. Totally appreciate it. Yeah. You know, it's an actual, it's a, it's a fucking masterpiece, but I'm going to make fun of it. (laughs) You know, or The Usual Suspects, one of my, one of my favorites. I have a hard time Uh, trying to keep that, that love of riffing movies. I, I, I have a hard time keeping that under wraps when I'm, also watching a play, I've learned. Yeah. Because the first time I ever saw The Phantom of the Opera, it was in L.A., and it was downtown, and it was a really beautiful, massive, expensive production, and uh, the guy has been kidnapped by the Phantom, and the girl says, let me see him one last time, and he says, be my guest. And I started singing um, a little bit louder than I should have, music from Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. And a number of people got really upset with me. And I was like, oh, crap, I'm doing this out loud. I'm sorry. Usually I keep this in. It just ruined the end of Phantom of the Opera for you people. You must have spent so much money. I am sorry. But... <laughs> There's been a couple of other instances like that, but I try and keep it in as much as I can. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, No, well, not much of a playgoer, but uh, we, we, my girlfriend and I were singing uh, Ooh Child Out Loud during Guardians of Galaxy. Oh, yeah, that was a great soundtrack. That was a (laughs) wonderful movie soundtrack right up there with with some of the other soundtracks that I am obsessed with. Like, that's yeah. right up there with, I don't know, uh, Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, uh, maybe oh, yeah. Scott, Scott Pilgrim's soundtrack. A bunch of the other ones that I find myself listening to all of the time, it's really rocketed up there. Because all of yeah. the music in that is just wonderful. Love that movie. Yeah, we had found a a, uh, a soundtrack video on YouTube that we play fairly often for Guardians yeah. of the Galaxy. Yeah. I can't imagine living – I can't imagine existing – I've been thinking about this lately because I have kids. Uh, my oldest is about to be 13 and my youngest just turned three. I can't imagine living in a world where YouTube has always existed. Yeah can't imagine that. My daughter just turned nine, and she watches YouTube just just constantly. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's, I, the way that, that I try and think of it is, essentially, this is a television station for her, where uh-huh. she can watch whatever she wants all the time. 
I can't imagine living with the technology that we have now it, from day one. Yeah. can't imagine that. That's got to be amazing. Mm-hmm. What, what, what I absolutely love is, for me, it's kind of a way back machine. Yeah. There's so much stuff that you can find there, and it's just like, oh, shit, I'm remembering this weird thing from when I was five. What is it? And you, you, you can eventually find it if you search hard enough. You know, some, yep. like, so some, some strange toy that you wanted as a kid, you can find the commercial for it, you know? Yeah, I grew I grew up in the suburbs of Phoenix, Arizona through the 80s and 90s and I spent the majority of my time in the, in a, in a one mall or another because yeah. that's just what you did if you were growing up at that time and you were in suburban America. And the mall that I specifically would spend all of my time in was Metro Center Mall. And it was in Phoenix, Arizona, and it's where they filmed Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And it's just, I remember it so much that, like, maybe maybe a, a handful of times a month, I will have a Metro Center-related dream where I'm young again <laughs> and I'm in Metro Center and everything is how I remember it. And so I went on YouTube, and wouldn't you know, here's home movies of someone filming Metro Center in 1987, and just like you said, like a way back machine, here is a nice 10 minute video of exactly what you remember. Uh huh. Really yeah, amazing. Exactly. I, I, I can't imagine being my, my son Maxwell always having access to that. I had to get older in order to be able to have this in my possession. I can't imagine how kids nowadays are going to do this. They're just going to be, they're going to grow up and they're going to get my age and they're going to be rude and impatient. Yeah. The internet is a glimpse of how rude people will be in the future. That is my uh, firm belief. I hope not. I hope I, I'm I wrong. Know. I don't know. I don't know. It, that really depends so much on social media and what goes on there. Yeah. There are a lot of people who put out a lot of positive stuff. I'm not one well, of them. <laughs> yeah. I guess we're one of those people. Putting out we're, positive stuff? Yeah, we're putting out positive stuff right here. This podcast is yeah. awesome. This, this is positive and this is awesome. But wait until you see Bob. Ooh. <laughs> oh, I am so happy. I am really happy. Yeah, that's, I'm already getting. Awesome. I'm already getting a bit of shivers here. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna do the first release on for Halloween, so it's gonna be a cool. Friday. And I've been cutting up the episodes, and like they're tailor designed for YouTube. You know, yep. very short attention span. You know. These things only run a minute or less. <laughs> yeah. And it was just it was just getting in there and just doing a lot of just seriously fucked up shit. You know, and just fucked up quotes. And it's hysterical at times. It's fucking chilling at times. God. You know? Okay. And the the makeup my girlfriend's been doing on me and my hair and just I, I, I would not be, I would not be surprised if the cops knock on my door if this gets popular <laughs> now that <laughs> is quite a good review there we just want to check out and make sure you're okay that you're not <laughs> really like that <laughs> nice yeah I mean, I've, I've got certain bits lined up that I want to do, you know, because it's, uh, it's mostly based on famous quotes. But if in the middle of doing a quote something takes me somewhere else, I just go with that. Yeah. You know? So it, it's so hard to describe. People are just going to have to see it. Uh, there's, a, there's a little test clip I put out um, so I can, I can get that to you, you know, but but only you. <laughs> Sweet. Until the 
full episodes come out. Yeah, the girl who does my music uh, wanted to get a better idea for it. She is amazing. Her name is Liz Day. She deserves tons of credit for all the all the stuff that she's done for me. Um, and she is the type of musician musician who who you could just like go, okay, I want it to be something like this, kind of like this, you know. And there you go, you know. That's wonderful. Um, this wasn't too terribly hard because I really wanted the music very much like Dark Shadows, you know. Yeah. So she pulled, you know, just so it can have an underlying sound, underlying soundtrack through the whole little bit. Um, and she pulled the new Johnny Depp one, and there's there's some really good music on that. I never, I, I haven't seen that movie yet. Um, oh God. And that was like the oh, first I God. heard the music. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I remember watching Dark Shadows when I was little. You know, it it showing up on TV and UHF and uh-huh. cable channels. I remember seeing Dark Shadows. I remember Barnabas, and I remember liking that. And Johnny Depp is a talented man. Yeah. But that movie is just... Uh, it, it shits on my childhood, is what it does. It shits on my childhood. <laughs> I do. I do that's, story that's times. how I feel about it. What? Yeah, I do story times for kids. I I do it once or twice a week. I've been doing them with with my job for over ten years. And one of the things that I regularly tell the kids, and everybody laughs at it because they think that it's funny, and it is funny. But I mean it honestly. I look at the kids and I say, kids. Let me tell you something, a life lesson that you need to know now when you're young. Whatever you like, eventually there will be a movie that ruins it. (laughs) Whatever you are into now, eventually there will be a movie or a revival or a reboot, and it will destroy everything. So like what you can now before Hollywood continues to run out of ideas and grabs the thing you like and makes it horrible. Because yeah. Nicholas Cage and, has to work, or else he yeah. will destroy us all. And I really thought that Tim Burton was going to be the kind of person who would get it, you know? Ooh. But apparently not. Have you heard my Tim Burton theory? I, I a, don't think so. I have a Tim Burton theory, and it may... It sounds crazy. And that's because yeah. it is. But I am I am I honestly believe this. For the longest time now, Tim Burton has only been making movies to impress me. Really? Okay. It, it, I I loved Batman comic books and yeah. he did Batman and then okay. And then I was obsessed with Ed Wood and then he did Ed Wood. And that was a bit odd. I was also obsessed with um, the the books of Roald Dahl, James and the Giant Peach, and Willy Wonka and the Uh Chocolate Factory. He, he, He took those away from me. Maybe he's not trying to impress me. Maybe he's trying to piss me off. I also used to collect... Mars Attacks trading cards when I was a kid, and he took that away uh, from me. Though the only Disney, my favorite Disney animated film, there's like a, it's a tie between The Three Caballeros, which is just weird and horrible and bizarre and wonderful, and The Adventures of um, Ichabod and Mr. Toad, because their version of the story of Sleepy Hollow is just beautiful, and then he took Sleepy Hollow away from me. I was obsessed with the original Planet of the Apes movie. He took that away from me. I read the book Big Fish when it first came out. It was called Big Fish, a novel of mythic proportions by Daniel Wallace. Mm. He took that away from me. And it, it, I, my, my favorite musical was Sweeney Todd. He took that away uh-huh. from me. I loved Alice in Wonderland. He took that. I was obsessed with Dark Shadows. <laughs> took that away from me. He is obsessed with me personally. I wouldn't be surprised. Now he's doing the movie Big Eyes, which is based on those paintings I always thought were cool in the 70s. Uh, uh-huh. He's he's taking that away from me. I would not be surprised if his next movie starred Johnny Depp and he plays 
a 30-year-old Mexican man with kids and a mustache who works at a bookstore. If this happens, do not be surprised. And you've heard it here first, folks. You've heard it here first. His next film is going to be about a Mexican man who loves popcorn and porn. (laughs) And everyone's going to go, oh, well, this is a surprising stretch for Tim Burton. And then I'm going to be locked in my house because Tim Burton is following me. It's following you or has, like, he's filming you, like, gorilla style? Possibly. Here are I'm some picturing things that... Helena Bonham Carter. I'm picturing Helena Bonham Carter holding an automatic weapon, kind of like those old Patty Hearst. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> here are some things that here are some things that Tim Burton's next film after Big Eyes might be about. Um, big boobs. Yeah. Beer. Popcorn. Um, monkeys movies. Maybe he'll remake the Monkey's Head. Maybe that'll be the next <laughs> movie for him. Because he is really obsessed with me. I'm not obsessed with him. I'm kind of over Tim Burton. He's a saint in my religion, but I haven't liked a movie of his in a really long time. But he is obsessed with me. Well, can you can you just take away your sainthood? Maybe. I, I might think about it if he continues to stalk me in this very bizarre fashion. I loved his short film, Frankenweenie. And then he decided to remake that just to spite me. <laughs> I was very surprised and, and happy. This is a, a major achievement for me to have read your blog the other day to find that I was thinking. Yes. Yes, I keep meaning to make it official on the the actual church website, but I, I I've got three kids, and it's just it. I <laughs> try to update that website, but eventually, yes, it will be made official. You are in fact a saint in my religion. Why? Thank you. It is it is a complete honor. Oh yeah, no problem. If anyone deserves it, it is you for for uh, <laughs> spreading the good word of wood. Thank you. I no appreciate problem. it. It was a totally pleasant surprise, yeah. Yeah, it, it's so, being made official right here. <laughs> so what are, what are we covering next week? Um, The movie A-P-E. A asterisk, P asterisk, E asterisk. It also goes by the name Attack of the Giant Horny Gorilla. <laughs> it's from 1976. It stars Joanna Kearns. What show was she from? Is that was that was, was that Growing Pains? Growing Pains. I think it was Growing Pains. It is such a bad movie that five years ago it, it was unavailable anywhere. I, I couldn't find it was it was I couldn't find it on YouTube, on Daily Motion, anywhere. I, I couldn't torrent it. I couldn't download it anywhere. I, I had to buy it on DVD for $35. Oh. And I think it cost so much because the people, whoever owned the rights, knew it was horrible and was just hiding it from the world. But it, it <laughs> within the last year, it has appeared on YouTube, and I am shocked that more people haven't seen this movie because it really is the greatest, worst movie in the world. I, I am obsessed with this film. APE, 1976. I love this movie. Well, I'll, I'll be looking forward to that one. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to plug? Anything else I want to plug? Yes, I I want to plug Evil. Just Evil Things. Okay. You know, okay. just just Evil. Evil is pretty awesome. Evil has all the good bands and all the good uh, They do have a lot of good music. Yeah. They do. They have a lot of good music. Um, and I want to plug, um, what else? I, I want to plug this band that I've heard of. They're called The Beatles. Okay. Apparently their music is kind of big, and I just want to get their name out there. So I don't think a lot of people have heard of them. The Beatles. I, I, B-E-A. I don't know if they're going to, I don't know if they're going to make it with those haircuts they have. Uh, yeah, they're British, though, so they can get away with a lot of stuff. But I don't know. I think they might be big. 
You think they might be big? Well, well, you know, I'm going to tell them that. You know, we'll have to see. You know, certainly I don't wish the kids anything bad, you know. Yeah. Good luck to them. But I just think that whole bowl mop top thing is kind of silly, you know. Yeah. I mean, I'm old. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I also want to plug my website, reverendsteve.blogspot.com. That's my blog, a bunch of free movies and free music. And be sure and check out, of course, the Church of Edwood at edwood.org. Get saved today by Wood. You get a very nice certificate with it as well, by the way. Yes, and, and I don't <laughs> think that's working right now, but we'll get we'll get to that. And Again, in my case, I was able to I was able to choose a baptism name that that yes. matched my name. So yes. that worked out great. <laughs> yes. The baptism names are like the best part of it. That there's like hundreds. I, there's like a hundreds of different names you can pick. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's about to wrap it up to this episode of the Pope on Film. Yes, thank you I'm, for listening. Yeah. I'm Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve. All right, we will see you next time. See you, you next better week. be careful. Yes.